It's another rainy day on the homestead, which means it's time for sector analysis. Let's jump right into it. A sector analysis is basically the evaluation of different flows of energy onto your property. Some examples of the different kinds of energy are water, wind, fire, and even the sun. Also included in the sector analysis is view considerations. Our homestead is on 10 acres. This is an overview of our western 5 acres. The left blue line represents a small valley that fills with water after heavy rain events and the spring thaw from snowmelt. The right blue line represents a seasonal creek. Now let's take a look at the natural energy inputs. The yellow line is the trajectory of the hot summer sun. The green line is the winter sun. The brown arrow shows the direction of the warm summer winds and the blue is the cold winter winds. The pink highlights the areas where there are really nice views that we may want to preserve. And since we're in the inland northwest and wildfires are a real threat here, and we have really no fire breaks in place, I consider the fire sector to be 360 degrees. Now after identifying these energy flows, we can now make more informed decisions about where we want to place or install elements within our design. Here's an example of how the sector analysis impacted the placement of the garden. Prior to installing the garden, I knew the neighbors to our south sprayed chemicals. I did not know at the time that everyone else around me also sprayed. But I knew the predominant wind directions and observed the trees to both the north and south of where the garden is now. The trees would serve as a windbreak from any chemical drift. So that's why I decided to place the garden where it is. <sighs> it has finally stopped raining. Little buddy just went running out here saying he needed some fresh air. Where are you little buddy? There you are. What are you doing under there? and feed the boys. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead. So, do you want to get the boys some hay? I'll go with you. Sure. Actually, you know what? I'll get them some hay. Yep. What happened to the other hay you had? Even though it was raining, I still had to do morning chores this morning, of course. And I gave the boys their alfalfa pellets. And before I dumped their hay in here just now, I saw a bunch of alfalfa pellets still on the bottom. They ate most of them, and it, it could be that I gave them a little too much, or they just didn't like them when they got a little soggy. Coming in the garden area here and seeing this moist garden bed has reminded me that I need to install some drip irrigation lines through here.
the first grass-fed homestead video we ever published on YouTube was a video called Drip Irrigation. That was before we even moved on to the property here. In that video we were setting up the garden beds and I did an install of the drip irrigation system. We've picked up some new viewers along the way who may not have seen that old video. So I'll do a brief overview of the drip irrigation system. Attached to the hydrant, I have an electronic battery power timer. It's set to go off a few times a day. Uh, we have not had any issues with this. It's worked without fail. It's been awesome. The next part in the system is this pressure regulator. It reduces the pressure to an appropriate amount for the drip lines at the other end of this hose. This is my non-toxic hose made by Water Rights. The hose runs all the way across here into the sheep laneway. The hose ends here where it connects to the polyethylene main line that leads to the drip lines. The main line runs along here into the garden area over there. I used this device which punches a hole in this main line and inserted a little plastic connector. On the garden beds I have these solid polyethylene lines that run up from the main line. A 90 degree elbow joint here connects to the drip line. So it goes over the edge of this garden bed nicely. On this bed, because I didn't have the wooden frame, the solid line, I just ran up to this point here and then connected the drip line without using the 90 degree elbow and just ran the drip line out. All right, little buddy, you see that squash right there? Yeah. That's gonna be for lunch. You wanna go ahead and pick that? Uh, it's a nice looking squash there, isn't it, buddy? A little bit. A little bit? Yep. I think it looks nice. There you have it, an irrigated and mulch raised garden bed for our fall crops. Man, what a feast for the dinos today. We got two grasshoppers sitting right here. I already fed them two grasshoppers a little while ago. We got another one right here. Yep. Okay, this will be number five for the day. Ready? Yep. Did you got him? Got him. Yep, let's go. She's in the grass hopper. She's there. Oh, dear. The barred rock is trying to get the grasshopper from the red star. That one? Mm hmm. See, she's chasing. To get one more red star, that one? I just saw another one in here, but I gotta find it again. I lost it. So, where'd they go? Oh, see if I can get him. Oops. Ready? One, two, two three. three. Did you got him? Yes, I did. You want one, Miss Bardrock? There you go. Where'd they go? Oh, Red Star got it. Red Star got it again. Oh, Bardrock stole it. <laughs> 